There's something exhilarating about being at the highest point on earth. That's why every year thousands of people risk their lives trying to climb to the summit of Mount Everest. It has been a childhood dream of mine to one day make it to the top of that mountain and feel what it's like to be standing higher than anyone else on the planet. But before I attempt to summit Mount Everest, I need to first make the two week trek to Everest base camp to see how my body holds up and find out if I'm cut out for this. Over the next 12 days, I'm gonna be hiking around eight hours a day at elevations higher than I have ever been to before. Not gonna lie, this is tough. This is sure to be an adventure. Good morning from Kathmandu, Nepal. It is about 5.30 in the morning. We are heading to the airport right now to take the most dangerous flight in the world from Kathmandu to Lukla. My stomach's in knots right now. I wasn't ready for that turbulence. And somehow that's not the craziest thing we're doing today. This is my cousin Sam. We're gonna be trekking together. How you feeling? Dude, I'm excited. Feeling good. This is gonna be an epic journey. Tourism is alive and well. This airport is jam-packed. This is us right here. We're here at the Kathmandu Domestic Terminal. Our flight leaves at 7.15. It's 6.45 right now. I've heard these flights get delayed and canceled all the time due to high winds. The reason this flight is so dangerous is because the landing strip is in between two giant mountains. The landing strip is so small and the winds get so high that the planes have such a hard time landing. Hopefully we'll be able to leave on time we don't know yet, we're just waiting to get word from the pilot. If we can, we'll find out soon. All right, it is 7.25. We just got our boarding passes and got the green light to board the plane. I lied, when we went to board the plane, they said the weather wasn't looking great, so we needed to wait about another hour to see if the winds die down a little bit, see if we can board. This flight could be interesting today. They said the winds are very high, and it's now nine o'clock. Still have them boarded. So we're just waiting to get the green light to go. I'm not sure how much longer it's gonna be, but hopefully soon. We're going, let's go, woo! On to the bus, baby. There she is. Here's our beautiful baby right here, home for the next 30 minutes. There's the cockpit right there. We got on this plane two minutes ago and we're already taking off. No messing around. When you get on the plane, they say to come to the left side because you can see all the mountains out the window on this side. This is gonna be amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we made one turn and the whole plane tilted. Yeah. Very safe, right? Oh, very safe. Not we have like one big Dude, I'm yeah. nervous. <laughs>
thoughts right now. I wasn't ready for that turbulence. Okay, this is actually scarier than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to be totally fine. Turbulence is a little stronger than I thought. We are safe now. Yeah, we did it. Yes. Woo. Thank you. We survived. Woo. That was a crazy flight. So glad it's over. So I just learned a fun fact, not just any pilot with a pilot's license can fly into this airport and land. You have to go through special examinations and licensing to be able to land here since it is so technical and so difficult. So these guys are the best of the best, they're flying in. I have to say, I've been on hundreds and hundreds of flights and never before has a flight gotten my adrenaline going like that before. <laughs> Dude, that was wild. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be so bumpy and turbulent. Okay, and here's our guy D-Lock. D-Lock, my name is D-Lock. We are going to Gokyo ABR Everest Trek. From the Gokyo, one of the best view from the world. Yes, I'm excited. He's been to Everest Base Camp hundreds of times, he said. So, he's the right guy for the job. All right, so we just landed in Lukla. The plan for today is hike about four miles to Puk Ding, and it can take us anywhere from two to four hours depending on how fast we go, and then we're gonna spend the night there. But before we start trekking, we're gonna have some snacks. How's it going, man? I'm Jordan. Nice to meet you. He's our, our porter for the next two weeks, so he's carrying our bags here. You're strong. <laughs> Thank you. We haven't even started the trail yet and the scenery around here is just absolutely insanely gorgeous. Just mountain views everywhere you look. North Face Himalayan Resort. Thank you, sir. d is not only our guide, he's our server at the restaurant, too. <laughs> so we've got some Sherpa tea, and then they served us some egg omelet with toast. Sam got fried egg and Tibetan bread. Lukla, the town we're in right now, sort of acts as a hub for Everest and base camp. They fly all the supplies in from Kathmandu to here, and then they load them up on yaks and donkeys to take up to the other villages along the way to Everest. Hello. Oh, he's so cute. Okay. So this represents good luck? Good luck, yes. Every, every time. This is the official start of the Everest Trail. This gate right here. All right, here we go. We're through. Let's begin. Jump, jump. We have perfect hiking conditions today. It's about 65 degrees out here, and there's a slight breeze. It just feels amazing, and it's so peaceful. I already love this trail. I'm gonna try and stay this positive the entire time. Hopefully, the altitude sickness doesn't kill me when we get a little bit higher. This is a typical Nepalese house here in Lukla. I haven't seen any actual wooden doors yet. Most of them just have this cloth over it, which is kind of cool. These are the cutest little puppies. Always supposed to turn these wheels clockwise and it represents good fortune and good luck. They're like a pest to him, he's like, yeah, get out of here. <laughs> Our first suspension bridge. Oh, 
<laughs> this is amazing. So these rocks are sacred rocks with ancient Nepali writing on them. You're not allowed to go around it counterclockwise. Similar to the wheels we turn, you always go around it clockwise. So even if you're coming from this way, you take the long way around and go around it. We are about three miles into our trek, so we only have a little over a mile left until we get to Puk Ding. We've just sat down for lunch. We both ordered vegetable fried noodles. The meals have cost about $4 each so far, which is very reasonable considering what they have to do to bring all the food up here. So I'm excited to try these. Namaste, thank you. This looks great. Pretty good. Every new village we come to is just so unique and so cool. It's hard to put the camera down. Wow, look at that. That is so cool. So these writings in the rocks are memorials. When a family member passes, they will carve into a stone that person's name or a memory and then they'll put it up on these rocks. It's very special and, and peaceful feeling here. All right, we have made it to Puk Ding. It took us about three hours, 4.21 miles. We are walking through the village right now and we are gonna go to our tea house where we're staying for the night and check it out. We're not roughing it at all, man. We've got cooked meals along the way, sleeping in a bed tonight. It's great. Wow, this is such a beautiful city. We're getting lapped right now by our porter. This dude's the man. Killing it. So we're staying a little bit outside of Puk Ding, so we're gonna cross this bridge and we're staying all the way up there in that tea house. This is so cool. Bye. Namaste. 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 Here we are, here's home for the night. Check out this view, right from the hotel. Overlooking the whole valley, beautiful river. Can't get enough of these views. All right, quick little room tour here. So we got the two double beds here. We have an amazing view out the window. And down here, we're still low enough where they give us our own bathroom. Oh, we have a Western toilet. Yes. Incredible. You never know if it's gonna be a hole in the ground or this type of toilet. This is a luxury. We have a sink, and then he said there's hot running water here for showers, which we don't know how many days we're gonna be able to shower, so we're gonna take advantage of that. All in all, this is better than I was expecting. I think this is perfect for being this high up in the mountains. The bed looks really hard, but it's got a nice little soft topper on it. Not too bad. This bridge was so cool, we came back to get a few more shots. The sun's gone down and the lighting is just amazing right now. We got to our tea house about 3 p.m. and we had some time to kill, so we just came on a short hike to this local village where there aren't any tourists and it's kind of cool to see how the people live here. Namaste. These kids are so adorable. in the night with a traditional Nepalese meal, dalbat, which is curry and vegetables with rice. There's some spicy sauce on the side. You're supposed to just mix it all together and try it like that.
It's actually not curry, it's lentils. And that's really good. It's really flavorful. Mm. This is good. Good morning from Pukding, Nepal. The plan for today is to trek 11 kilometers or about seven miles. We're gonna be gaining 2,500 feet of elevation, getting to 11,000 feet, and it should take us about six hours. We're trekking to Namche Bazaar today. But first, let's get some breakfast. We were told that while we were on this trek, we shouldn't eat any meat because the villages higher up don't have any fresh meat. Any meat they serve gets brought up by yaks and they carry it for days and days and there's no sort of refrigeration process. So it's just easier to get sick if you do eat the meat here. So the next two weeks, we're vegetarian. Six hour walk from here to Nancy over there. Nancy height 2,440 meters. We just finished up a nice breakfast with some eggs and toast. But the best part was a hot cup of tea because it is pretty cold this morning. And we've just started on the trek. Have about six hours to go to Namche. Some nice flags behind me here. It's crazy the stark difference in temperature. When we started two minutes ago, we were really cold and as soon as the sun hit us, we're almost ready to shed layers already. It gets super hot during the day and very cold at night. I love this river with this peak in the background. So beautiful. Paying our national park yeah, entry fee. Okay. 10 minutes in, we're ready to shed layers. <laughs> Going to the shorts and short sleeves. That was quick. <laughs> Any direction you look, it's like the most insane view ever. Before coming out here, we read online that a lot of people try and push through the first two to three days, go really fast, and just make it through. These first two days have honestly been mind-blowing. Just the scenery and the beauty has been so much fun to experience, and I've loved taking it slow and just seeing all the sights along the way. This part of the trek almost has a Lake Tahoe vibe to it. We're actually trekking inside of a national park right now, and we're surrounded by big pine trees, the river running through. It's so beautiful. That was the first of two suspension bridges we're gonna to cross today. Those are always my favorite part. This peak here is called Kumbila. It's one of a few peaks in Nepal that are illegal to climb because it's considered holy. It's around 6,000 meters high and Namche, where we're hiking today, is just over there at the base of it. Donkey traffic. My favorite thing when d -Lock pushes donkeys. Keeping us safe one donkey at a time. We're about two hours in. We've hiked three miles so far. We've come to the village of Manju. We're gonna take a quick water and snack break. Here's a pretty cool map depiction of the valley. This is Namche where we're going tonight. And Everest. Sagarmatha is the name of Mount Everest in Nepali. So we've just entered in the Sagarmatha National Park. Suspension bridge number two. This water is actually coming straight from Mount Everest. That's why it looks so milky, that color. 
It is 11 o'clock, which means we've been trekking for three hours now. We've done almost four miles, which means we're about halfway to Numche. We've just stopped for lunch. Last night I had one of the best meals of my life, dalbot, lentils and rice. So I've ordered that again for lunch. Can't wait to try it here. We're gonna hang out here for the next bit before getting back on the road. All of the tea houses have pretty much the same menu. They have soup, noodles, fried rice, sandwiches. Some have pizza, pasta, and then curry. Hey, thank you, thank you. This is my favorite meal. Thank you. You love the Nepal. I love Dalbat. It's amazing. Thank you. This one came with just a big plate of white rice and then a bowl of like curried vegetables and then lentils as well. So just gonna mix it all together and enjoy this. Hey, thank you. Sam, first time having Dalbot, how is it? Good, good choice. <laughs> d -Lock told us if the weather holds up and stays clear like it is right now, there is a chance we can see Everest today for the first time. So that would be pretty incredible. Also, I was wrong, we're crossing four suspension bridges today, not just two. So we're coming up on our third right now. Woo. I'm scared to hold the camera out over here. We have flat for the next mile and then after that, the last mile to Namche is supposedly pretty uphill. So I'm enjoying this while I can. This river in the background is just stunning. Stairway to heaven, here we go. All right, so this suspension bridge is Hillary Bridge, the longest suspension bridge on the trek and also nicknamed the mother of all bridges. We're about to go across it right now. The uphill climb has begun. Mother of all bridges. Here we go. Wow, look how windy it is out there. This is the first time I've actually been scared on a suspension bridge. That is a steep drop off on both sides. And the wind is picking up. Oh man. Woo! is no joke. Oh man, get me off of this thing. Woo! We made it! Uh, yeah. Epic! These guys are the real MVPs. Carrying all that weight on their back, strapped around their head. So impressive. That climb was worth it for that view right there. So here it is, we're getting our first look at Mount Everest. It's not that first peak that's visible, but the one right behind it. We've been trekking uphill for the last two hours or so. We're just getting to the tail end of it. Almost to Namche. Namche! We made it! What a beautiful sight. Yak cheese and chocolate, the necessities in life. Our home for the night, Hotel Kamal. We're on the fifth floor? We're going up five. All right. You thought we were done hiking today. All right, here's our room in Namche. We have two huge beds. Tons of space. Here's our bathroom, nice little sink. Still have the Western toilet for one more night and then a hot shower. Apparently the hot water turns off at six o'clock. So we made the mistake last night of showering before bed and the water was ice cold. So we're not gonna do that again. Best part of this room. Check out that view. This view out the window. Wow. Even though these hiking boots are very comfortable, it still feels nice take to take off. the boots off at the end of the day. It's a great feeling. I 
love this town. They have everything. Trekking pants, trekking poles, backpacks. Chocolate carrot cake. Before we came on this trip, we watched a full YouTube series on the whole base camp trek. When Kara and Nate came to Namche, they came to a bakery and raved about a chocolate carrot cake. We decided that when we got here, we wanted to come try it. We've just come into that exact same bakery, ordered the cake, and I'm so excited to give it a try. I was dreaming about this when we were climbing uphill today. Oh. Wow, that is really, really good. For being as high up and remote as we are, that's very impressive. Shout out to Kara and Nate. That was the best thing I've ever tasted in my life. Probably helped that we just trekked for six hours. <laughs> Couldn't help myself, the cake was so good I ended up getting an apple strudel too. We're 11,000 feet up in two days from Lukla, and they have all of this stuff up here. Just mind blowing. I don't know why we're hiking more after the day we did. I blame Sam. Taking a quick hike up to a monastery. It supposedly has really good views of Namche. There are two entrances to get into Namche. We came in through the top one, but there's also this lower one down here. And the views from this one are awesome. It's so beautiful. We're just about to go to dinner and I checked our final stats for today. According to the watch, we hiked nine miles total. We've taken 21,000 steps and did close to 4,000 feet of elevation gain. So I'm exhausted to say the least. Looking forward to a nice dinner and then resting up because tomorrow we have another big day ahead of us. Got some macaroni fried noodles and a pizza. <laughs> Looks really good actually. Good morning from the beautiful Namche, Nepal. It is day three of our trek to Everest Base Camp. We are currently at 11,000 feet. Today we are trekking about seven miles to Dole, which sits at 13,300 feet or 4,200 meters. It's gonna take us about six hours and we have quite a bit of uphill and downhill today. But what I'm most excited for today is that we're veering off from the normal path that most people take to get to base camp. The trail so far has been a little bit busy and so we're taking a non-traditional route to see things that most people don't get to see and I'm really excited about it. We're starting to get a little more remote now. We enjoyed our last hot shower, Wi-Fi and Western toilets and we're looking forward to the true Nepali experience. Starting the morning off with a quick trip to the monastery for good luck for our hike today. It's already starting to warm up, so the layers have come off. The monastery was really cool. It's 260 years old and sits up at the top of the valley overlooking everything. Really cool place. We have one more quick stop before the trek begins today. Came back to the bakery for two more apple strudels. They were so good. There's nothing I'd rather have at eight o'clock in the morning. Let's go. Gonna miss this place. It's amazing. 
Deloc said there's not another bakery over the next few days, so we had to stop one more time. So this is a really cool spot right here. This statue right behind me is a statue of the first Sherpa to ever summit Mount Everest. His name is Tenzing Norgay Sherpa. And then right behind him in the background, you can see Mount Everest. So this is our first time seeing it clearly. And it's so incredible just how majestic, tall it is. It's almost incomprehensible, but it's perfectly clear out. The weather's amazing. Being here and seeing that is just such a cool feeling. These are all terraces, grow crops here. And in the middle of it, basketball hoop. Here's our trail. All the way around this mountain, down and up. Here's another shot of Everest. Got the Ishtupa right there and the Everest in the background. So that is the tallest mountain in the world right there. And then that peak is the most technical climb in the world. Little yak traffic. Our trail today is sort of like a roller coaster. We have two miles of flat, three miles of straight uphill, one mile down, and then one mile up. And then we make it to our destination. Namaste. 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 <laughs> We're just about to start the uphill part of the hike, so it seemed like the right time to bust out the apple strudels. Pre-hike energy. This is the start of the uphill, but also where we're splitting. Most people will go this way to base camp. We're going to Gokio first. First of many steps up to the top of that mountain. That's the village we came from right there. We just ran into some wild musk deer and they're everywhere right now. Really cool. They look like mountain goats and they're all over this mountain right now. Oh, there's a baby right up here. What? That was cool. There's probably about 50 of these goats surrounding us right now. And as you can see by the terrain, we've officially reached an elevation above the tree line. So we shouldn't be seeing any more trees and all mountain vegetation from here on out. Okay, so we just finished up our three mile uphill trek. It wasn't as bad as I was expecting, just with the altitude, got a little winded. We made it to the village of Mongla, where we're gonna sit down and have some lunch. So this village is at 13,000 feet. We're starting to get more and more remote. I was just looking over the menu and I've noticed when we started trekking, the meals were about three to four dollars. They're getting up into that seven, eight dollar range now. And it's probably only gonna go up from there. I've tried pretty much everything on the menus now. They're all similar. My favorite is dalbat, which is rice and lentils and vegetables. So I've ordered that again. And we're gonna enjoy some pretty epic views from this lunch spot. There's the trail we just came up. Got a little windy outside, so we moved inside. Also, this has been the surprise of the trip that I never knew I needed. Ginger lemon honey tea. We have it basically every meal now and it is so good. Mm. Cheers. 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 A lot of lentils. That's amazing. Back 
on the road. We are beginning our thousand foot drop. We have downhill for the next mile. And yes, it's a little chilly out here. The clouds came in and made it quite a bit colder. That yeah. village is just sitting in the clouds. So we were above the tree line, but since we've descended so much, we're back in it. These views we're hiking to right now are so amazing. Right behind us, we have this valley, and this river is actually flowing from Cho'oyu, straight from the glacier, and going all the way down. Two more hours. This is the Nepalese national flower right here. So I mentioned that we're taking the less traveled route to base camp. In the five or so hours we've been trekking, we've seen a few solo trekkers, but we haven't seen a single other group with a guide on this route, which makes it just that much more special. Feels like we have it to ourselves. It started raining on us pretty hard there for a little bit. But we finished our big climb uphill. We made it to Dole. This is a beautiful little village. Let's go have a quick look around. We're a full three days into our trek and 13,000 feet from sea level. And there are still homes and guest houses everywhere. We're getting hot cooked meals with all sorts of different options. Everything has to be brought in from Lukla on yak or by porter. So that's a three day journey. They do grow a few things here locally like potatoes, some other vegetables, but other than that, it's all brought up. It's just really cool to think that they've been able to figure out that economy and make it work. Here's our tea house for the night. So we are at 4,200 meters or about 13,200 feet. Here's our room for the night. We have two beds. Nice view out this window here. And then this one, the toilets are not in the room, but they are right next to us. Looks like we have one Western toilet and one local toilet. And here's our sink. Not too bad. Wow, this is beautiful. According to the watch today, we hiked nearly 11 miles in total, took 26,400 steps, and burned 2,500 calories. So, not a bad day, but I'm exhausted. See you in the morning. Good morning from Dole, Nepal. It is day four of our trip to Everest Base Camp. Today is going to be our shortest hike of the trek so far. We have three miles to hike, and it should take us about three hours. Right now we're at 13,100 feet of elevation, and today we'll be gaining about 1,400 feet of elevation and getting to 14,500 feet to the village of Machermo. days, Dawa has been carrying our stuff. So like this, they wear it around their forehead. And then up? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is crazy heavy. I'm never complaining about carrying my pack again. Feels like my neck's gonna break. <laughs> Dawa, so much respect to you, man. 
They say the pack's around 50 pounds, but I'm not buying it. I think that's closer to 75 or 100 pounds. That's pretty heavy. And we're carrying that on flat ground. He's carrying that up steep mountains with high elevation. That's crazy. So easy for you guys. Yeah. You have strong because necks. Of, because of I'm trying uh, sometimes butter and then sometimes guide. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that is quite the meal right there, my friend. What do we got there? We've got a mixed omelet on Tibetan bread. Jeez. <laughs> Looking so good. Tibetan bread is just a big fried piece of bread. Oh, that looks good. Oh. Mm. And I think mine is the same thing, but instead of the Tibetan bread, it's just the chabati bread, not fried. And of course, ginger lemon honey tea. Just finished up our delicious breakfast and we're leaving the town of Dole. Going to start making our way up this mountain right here along that trail. There goes Dawa. Here's Dole. Incredible mountain view in the background. This trail with those mountains in the background, so epic. So this mountain right behind us is called Tom Sergut and it's 6,600 meters. And it looks massive from where we are and Everest is still over 2,000 meters higher than that. Just hard to comprehend how big Everest actually is. We are not yak. We are the trekkers. We are the mountain mountains near us. <laughs> what a beautiful song. Starting song. So we just hit 14,000 feet in elevation. Here's a cool little guest house up here. Almost has a New Zealand feel to it with the green fields, all the rocks in the background. There's the trail we came along. We see quite a few helicopters going past us each day. A lot of them are carrying people and supplies to base camp, but the reality is, Quite a few of them are rescue helicopters too, which is a little unnerving to think about. We are coming up on the village of Lunja, just right behind me. All of these green fields are pastures for the yaks where they eat and how the local villagers keep them in. Yaks are the most important animal in Nepal. Dilok was telling us that they use the yaks not only to carry supplies from village to village, but also they use their milk for butter, cheese. They use their fur for clothing and instruments and also eat the meat, yak steaks. They are super important to Nepali people. And I almost forgot, the yaks are one of the only animals in Nepal that can survive at this elevation. Donkeys can make it to about 12,000 feet, whereas the yaks can survive at much, much higher. All right, about two hours and 13 minutes later, we made it to Machermo. And right in time, because it just started snowing for the first time on the trek. It's actually kind of fun to be in this snow. I expected more of this. I'm sure there will be plenty more higher up. On day one, we accidentally figured out the greatest trekking snack in the world. And we just ordered it, I'm gonna show you. So this is masala tea. It's like a cinnamony tea. 
and you dip the Oreo into the masala tea, it softens it up immediately and adds a level of flavor that is just absolutely delicious. You could die right now and be happy. <laughs> so good. Nothing better. Trust me on this one. So good. I have to say a huge thank you to d because he's been carrying up these Oreos and fruit for us every single day. Thank you. <laughs> really branching out here with some Dalbot. <laughs> We just finished up our lunch and this snow is picking up. Whew. Gonna head to the room. All right, home sweet home. Got two twin size beds with blankets on them, a pillow, little hanging rack, and the view out our window. Still snowing. So today is more of an acclimation day for us. We could have kept going another three hours to the next village of Gokio, but d -Lock, our guide, said that sometimes if you go too far in one day, you can get altitude sickness, and it started snowing, so we figured the smart thing to do was just stay here tonight at 14,500 feet, and then in the morning, we'll head to Gokio, which is above 15,000 feet. Here's our bathrooms. The toilets here don't flush. So we get some water. We dump it down. And wash your hands with this bucket. d -Lock only gave us one instruction for this afternoon and it was not to take a nap. You look very sleepy over there. <laughs> I want to so bad. Did he say it messes with... Gives you a headache. Gives you a headache. I'll take the headache if I can nap, please. We're going to do our best not to fall asleep. But we have five hours till dinner. <sighs> this is definitely the coldest we've been so far on the trek. I've been bundled up in this blanket and all my jackets for the last couple of hours. We're gonna have a nice hot dinner and then hit the sack early. We're gonna have a big day of hiking tomorrow in the snow. At least someone's enjoying the snow. It's been snowing nonstop for the last three hours now. So, I'm glad we didn't trek up to Gokio today. I think this was a good idea. Since we're above the tree line here at 14,500 feet, it's too hard to get firewood up here. So instead, to keep everything warm, they burn yak dung. from the snowy and beautiful Machermo, Nepal. It is day five of our trek to Everest Base Camp. Today we have a five mile trek to Gokyo, which is located at 15,700 feet. We're currently at 14,500, 
So we're gonna be gaining about 1,200 feet of elevation today. Yesterday was snowing pretty much all day and we have woken up to a perfectly clear, sunny day here in Machermo. Even though it is still a little cold, the hiking conditions are perfect. The valley is just so clear this morning. Peaks in every direction. And that's the village we just came from. There are 14 peaks in the world over 8,000 meters. Before coming on this trip, I watched a documentary on Netflix called 14 Peaks, where Nims Dai, a Nepalese trekker, and his team summited all 14 peaks in a record-breaking amount of time. Right now, we are coming up on one of those peaks, Cho'oyu, which is the sixth tallest mountain in the world. This elevation is getting to me, I'm out of breath. The weather is perfectly clear today and we're getting a beautiful view of Cho'oyu. Seeing it in person gives a little teeny tiny bit of perspective to just how incredible those guys are for summiting these peaks. 8,493 meters, Cho'oyu. Insane. And look at all the mountains around it too. Just so beautiful. What an incredible start to the morning. We're only 15 minutes into the trek and we we're already able to see such an incredible mountain. Just love how these villages up here are self-sustaining. They farm everything themselves. They get their own water. They build their own homes and they get to live with views like these. The change in temperature here is so dramatic. This morning I was wearing long sleeve shirt, fleece sweatshirt, two jackets and a beanie. And then as soon as the sun came out, all the snow melted. Now I'm down to one shirt and a hat. I love the gray color of this water in the river. This river is running directly down from Cho'oyu. So it's just 100% glacial water. There's the trail where we just came from. Deluxe got a surprise yeah, for me. I have one cookies. Namaste. Please. Thank you. How many fish I have? Uh, uh, you have three in there. Two. One. <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Go, Deluxe, go! to take this moment and say that we completely lucked out in the guide department. Anyone coming to base camp, come with Alpine Ramble Treks and request d -Lock. He has been so much better than we expected. He has been an amazing guide in every aspect. He's so knowledgeable. And if he knew I was saying this, he'd be mad at me because he's so humble. But I seriously love the guy and I'm so happy we have him. Dance it out. We're taking a quick moment to enjoy nature and enjoy a little dance break. For some reason, Snickers just taste better at 15,000 feet. Thank you, D-Lock. This is a shrine for Buddha and people that pass by leave money in there 
but nobody comes by and, and steals it because it's considered holy. We've gotten extremely lucky with the weather since we've been here. Every day from sunrise till about 11 o'clock in the morning, it's clear and then after that the clouds roll in and it becomes foggy. It's about 11 o'clock right now and it's still perfectly clear. We're a couple miles in and we have another amazing view of Cho'oyu. And some cool rock formations. There is Cho'oyu, beautiful mountain. And this water right here is so much more clear than the river because this is actually running directly from Gokyo Lake. So even though it's super clear, Deloc said we couldn't drink it. There are five total lakes in Gokyo. This is lake number two. Lake number three is in the actual village of Gokyo. This one we'll see next. Look at the little baby yak. <laughs> You. This guy is not only carrying a pack on his back, he's also guiding all of these yaks. Look at him go. Oh my gosh. What a boss. Fun fact about Cho'oyu is that it borders Nepal and Tibet. So this part of it is in Nepal, and then the back side is all Tibet. We have made it to the village of Gokyo. Today's trek wasn't that bad. The uphill was really gradual, and so even though I could feel the elevation, we got here, in about four hours and feeling really good. We're gonna go have some lunch. 4,800 meters, 15,750 feet. Looks like this is home for the night. Not a bad little dining hall. Wow, oh, but typical. Perfect. Yeah. We have a toilet. That's the best news I've heard all day. Oh my God. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, beautiful. Two twin beds, blankets, yeah. pillows, got a little nightstand, our own bathroom. Is that a shower too? Oh, yes. Whoa. <laughs> Full confession, haven't showered in three days. So if that works, that would be amazing. Okay. Here's our view out yeah, the window. I'm very happy. Okay. This guy's living in luxury over Dude. here. Two pillows. Two pillows. It's <laughs> perfect. Beautiful. I learned the trick to eating dalbot. You have to make a big hole in the middle and then you dump on the doll. Bon appetit. This dalbot is very good. <clears throat> that was one of the best dalbots we've had. Maybe because we're at 15,000 feet, but it was amazing. Oh, I'm already so full. We'll share the momos. Oh, yeah. yeah so Those good. look so Those good. Yeah. Those actually homemade. really good. Those are beautiful. Okay. Momo cheers. Momo Last one. Cheers. Momo cheers. Yeah, cheers. So after lunch, we decided to take a little hike to the top of this hill. And right behind me, is the longest glacier in the Himalayas, almost 18 kilometers long. And even though it looks like just a bunch of piles of rocks, it's actually all ice underneath there. You can see little ice walls in different parts of it. Really cool, we're actually gonna be crossing that in two days. Now on the other side, there's Gokyo from above. d -lock just casually walking across a trail that's falling down the mountain.
That's the trail we just came down right there. These clouds are right next to us. Sam and I have decided it wouldn't be a proper trip to Gokyo without jumping in this beautiful Gokyo Lake. This water comes straight from a glacier and is near freezing temperatures. So this could be a terrible idea, especially considering the fact that it's already very cold out here, but we're gonna do it anyways. Take off my five layers first. Mind you, that is glacier water. And that's exactly what it felt like. Ooh. Now that we're all dried off, I can honestly say that was epic and totally worth it. Sam, thoughts? 100% worth it. <laughs> Freezing, but worth it. <laughs> We took our favorite snack and made it even better. Oreos and hot chocolate. So I've been eating Dalbot pretty much every meal. Decided to branch out tonight and try a yak cheese pizza. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous for this yak cheese, but Sam's had it a few times. Every night, <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> So this one has tomatoes, onions, garlic, and a bunch of vegetables, and then yak cheese. It's actually not bad. The yak cheese is not as strong as I was expecting. Good morning from Gokyo Ri. It is day six of our trek to Everest Base Camp. We woke up at 3.30 this morning to hike two hours to the top of this mountain and see some of the most stunning scenery in the entire world. There's Mount Everest, and the sun is poking out right behind it. A sunrise over Everest, does it get any better? We made it. Namaste. On our climb, we gained 2,000 feet of elevation, so we're currently at 17,500 feet. I can definitely feel it, but the hike was totally worth it. From here, we'll be able to see four of the top 10 tallest mountains in the world. Mount Everest, Cho'oyu, Lotse, and Mount Makalu. In every direction you look up here, you can see mountain peaks, and it is easily one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. We got lucky again with the weather today. The skies are perfectly clear. We are able to see every single one of these peaks. It's minus five degrees Celsius out here. I have every layer on that I own 
and Deluxe out here with one jacket, and he says he's warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, good for me. So the sun's still coming up over Everest, but over here, we have a really good view of Cho'oyu right now. Such a beautiful mountain. So there's Gokio, that's the village we're staying in. And then right behind it, that's a glacier. And then right here, Mount Everest. just been sitting here enjoying these views for the last two or three hours now looking at all the different peaks and just admiring the beauty of this place it's so peaceful and it's so fun just to hang out here the Sun is just getting to a point where it's hitting the peaks of Everest and the other mountains around it so we're just starting to get a clear view of it How's the Oreo at 17,000 feet? This is the best Oreo ever made. <laughs> Thank you, D-Lock, for packing this up. I getting just a light, light, tiny, not uh, heavy. Light snack. Yeah. yeah. I'm singing the one song. It is a very favorite Nepali pop song. In the track, Resam Piriri. Okay. Resam Piriri. Thank you. Wow, that was beautiful, d -Lock. Thank you so much. Okay, there's the best view we've had of it today. Mount Everest. And then right next to it is Lhotse. Both over 8,000 meter peaks. Everest is 8,848 meters. Lhotse is 8,568 meters. And then Makalu Mountain in, in the back is 8,000 397 meters. I'm so, so grateful for this weather that we were able to see all four of those peaks. Not everyone's this lucky. Sometimes it's all cloudy up here and you can't see any of them. So the fact that it is this clear and we've been able to see as much as we have is just such a blessing. This has been one of the coolest experiences of my life. So I'd be lying if I said I wasn't super nervous going into today. I've had these crazy stomach pains on and off ever since we started the trek, but last night they were especially bad and they kept me up through most of the night. I wonder if the yak cheese had anything to do with that. After not getting much sleep at all, we left at 3.30 to go and climb to 17,500 feet. I've only been to 17,000 feet one time in my life and I got such bad altitude sickness that I basically had to crawl to the top of the mountain in Peru. This is brutal. This is a pain I have not experienced before. When you're hiking at high altitude, especially uphill, it feels like you're breathing through a straw sometimes. Combine that feeling with a stomach that wants to explode, and it was a tough trek for me this morning. All of that being said, 
When we got to the top, I felt totally fine. No altitude sickness, and I felt great for a couple of hours. So I'm super proud of how my body handled that. Then on the way back down, the stomach pain returned in full force. So I came down as fast as I could, drank a bunch of hot water, took a little medicine, and took a long nap. I'm feeling much better now, but today is the first day I've felt like the trek is catching up to me. So I'm just gonna take it super easy today and get ready for another day tomorrow. I say all of this not to complain, but rather to show the reality of what it's like being out here, the good and the bad. I've loved every minute of this trek and I'm super grateful to be here. And Gokyo Ri today, the top of those mountains, was completely epic. Looking forward to even better days on the trek. Okay, rant over. Why don't we put it on the wall and then put two rocks on top? I tried to take my laundry out to hang it up and d -Lock said, give it to me, give it to me. Hanging it on the sign out there, amazing. Turns out the world's highest bakery is located right here in Gokyo at 4,800 meters, 15,500 feet. So the baker invited us into the kitchen to get a sneak peek at how he makes everything. It smells amazing in here. Here's the cinnamon rolls before they go in, and then when they come out, right there. And a birthday cake. He makes everything by scratch, and we ordered two of those cinnamon rolls that we saw, as well as a chocolate croissant. So d -Lock and I are gonna try them out and see how everything tastes. Yeah, hopefully it should uh, taste uh, same like Namji as well. Yeah, that's right. All right, so they've just heated up the cinnamon roll and the chocolate croissant. Let's eat the cinnamon roll first, yeah? yeah? Okay. And please. Cheers. 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 Oh. At the same time. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yummy. Not bad. Not as sweet as a cinnamon roll in the United States, but most pastries aren't that sweet. Still tastes really nice. You like it? Good. Very good. Heat it up makes it a lot better. By the way, Sam is out hiking right now, but I have a cinnamon roll saved for him when he gets back. Next up is the chocolate croissant which d -Lock has opted out of. So I'm trying this one on my own. Mm. They put chocolate inside of the croissant and baked it just like they do at French bakeries. And it's really good, really sweet. They warmed this one up too. All in all, for being at this high of elevation, those are pretty good pastries. Thanks for eating with me. <laughs> Turns out the showers at our tea house aren't free. You can take a bucket shower, which they will boil a pot of water and you can dump it on yourself for four dollars, or you can take a gas shower in our room for five dollars. I think I'm gonna go with the gas shower. Let's see if it's actually hot. This is the first gas shower I've ever taken. So first, I had to turn the gas on right here. And then, I flip this switch, which makes the flames come on. And then, turn the water on. Oh, look at that. Nice. Oh, that's cold. Okay, what did I do wrong here? Uh, oh. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. And then the flames come on in the background. It's kind of intimidating. He's like, leave the window open just for safety reasons. Okay. Oh, there we go. There we go, the water's getting hot. All right, I'm going to enjoy this. I had almost forgotten how nice hot showers were. But I have to hurry and dry off because this water on my body is going to freeze. Oh my gosh. Worth every penny of that $5. Good morning from Gokyo. It is day seven of our trip to Everest Base Camp. We have a short day today. We only have a two and a half mile hike to Drognak, Thognak, one of those two. Should only take us about two hours. So to start off the morning, we are going to do a hike to another lake here near Gokyo to see some new mountains, new views. But, the coolest thing we are doing today is crossing the longest glacier in the Himalayas. It's almost 18 kilometers long, and we have to cross it to get to the next village we're staying at. So I'm super excited to see what that's like. The trek will be mostly flat today. We're staying in an elevation similar to what we're at now, about 15,500. Today is sort of another rest day because tomorrow is going to be the biggest day we've had yet. Once again, it's super clear this morning and we're getting views of peaks in every different direction. This never gets old. Quick 45 minute hike later, and we made it to lake number four in Gokyo. But the lake isn't even the most impressive part. The 360 degrees views of these peaks is really what we came for. Probably said this a hundred times already, and I'll continue to say it. Choyu is such an impressive mountain. The views of it today are just incredible. The day is about to get exciting. We just finished up our lunch and started on our journey to Tognak, and we are about to cross this massive glacier. 18 kilometers long. This thing is just a beast. I'm super excited for this. When I saw this for the first time, I didn't even realize it was a glacier because it's covered in so much rock and dirt. But then you see these ice walls and lakes throughout, and then you realize, while we've been walking over, we keep hearing a ton of rocks falling down the side of the mountain into the glacier lakes. This is gonna be fun. We just stepped onto the glacier. Taking our first steps right now. To be honest, it still feels like we're walking on a trail. <laughs> oh, you already went. Oh, oh you already went. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Oh, we... <laughs> I don't know why this is so satisfying, but it is. All right, three, 
too. We'll go. I'm trying to get more down. Yeah. We did it! <laughs> Woo! Here are some icicles to prove that we're actually crossing a glacier and that it's not just rocks. We just came off the glacier. It was a little less exciting than I was hoping for, I'll be honest. I guess I was just expecting to see more ice. It was still fun though. d -Lock told us that every time he crosses the glacier, he has to take a different path because the snow will melt or more snow is added on and the glacier completely changes. And just like that, we have arrived in Tongnak. I've been saying it wrong all day. Here's our home for the night. Chola Pass Resort, 4,700 meters of elevation. And we're just getting our first look at our path that we're gonna be taking tomorrow. It's gonna be our longest day yet, hardest day yet through that pass. Namaste, this is a small room for the Tola Pass tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's yellow. My new <laughs> All yellow. Small, but cozy. Yeah. Almost oh, touch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> touch the bed, see if it's comfortable. It's... Don't, don't mind those stain marks. Yeah, ignore the stain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yep, same memory foam as every place. All right, good deal. Seems as if we have had our last night with Western toilets. We have a few minutes before dinner, so I wanted to break down what it costs to do this exact trek that we're on right now. Alpine Ramble Treks, the company we're with, charges $1,300 a person, and that includes a guide, all the night stays at the tea houses, all meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, entrance fees into the national parks, the flight from Kathmandu to Lukla. A little bit of turbulence. The only thing that we are responsible to cover is anything extra that we purchase, any souvenirs, any snacks, and then we cover drinks, so bottled water, tea, and any soft drinks that we buy. Another optional expense that we chose to have is a porter. Porter is the guy that carries all of the stuff you don't take in your day pack and follows you along the whole trek. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is crazy heavy. It only costs $12 a day per person and you're supporting the local economy. These porters need us for their jobs. So if you're coming to do this trek, please hire a porter. And as a side note, another reason to hire a porter is because that is how they get their start to become a guide later on. So easy for you guys. Yeah, yeah sometime porter and then sometime guide. Yeah. Oh. And then if your guide and porter do a nice job, it's expected that you'll tip them at the end of the trek. And please tip them well. When we started the trek, water bottles were about 50 cents to a dollar. Meals were about $3. Most places charge five or more dollars for Wi-Fi, $5 for a shower. As you get higher, those prices just go up. So now meals are getting into that nine to $10 range. Water bottles are closer to three to $4. And tea house stays are about $30 a night per person. But again, all of that is covered with the company we're with. And that's been a huge relief for us not having to worry about paying for any of that. We've been buying bottled water everywhere we go. We have water filters on our water bottles, but just to be completely safe, that's what we've done. All right, let's go grab some dinner. Tonight we've got some fried noodles with eggs on top. And yak cheese pizza for this guy. Yet again. <laughs> Thank you, D-Lock. 
<laughs> he, tonight he brought us some apples and chocolate pastry that looks amazing. <laughs> Good morning from the village of Tongnak. It is day eight of our trek to Everest Base Camp. Today we have our longest and what could be our hardest day of the trek so far. We're starting the morning going through the Chola Pass, which is three miles, about three hours of uphill descent, gaining 2,500 meters of elevation, getting up to 17,560 feet. We then continue on for another five hours or so, totaling nine miles and between eight to nine hours of trekking. Let the fun begin. If you can't tell, it's quite cold this morning. The river is half running, half frozen. Found some snow peacocks. We've just hit 16,000 feet of elevation. We left this morning at 5.30. It's about seven o'clock now. The sun is just coming up over these peaks and it feels amazing. Time to shed a layer. How you feeling, Sam? Feeling good. Feeling strong? <laughs> Strong's relative, yeah, we're feeling strong. Elevation though, gets to you. Still feeling it. I feel bad Sam had a wicked sore throat and cough last night, it kept him up, didn't get much sleep. You never know what's gonna happen to your body in this elevation. Everybody just reacts differently. Just finished our first climb and we were rewarded with some really nice mountain peaks up here. d -Lock just mentioned that if you're using a GPS without a guide, it'll take you up this pass here, but you have to have crampons and ropes to get that way. But the actual correct way to go is over this way. So just another reason to hire a guide. Chola Pass has nothing on us. Whew. Never mind, I'm really tired. <laughs> This is what it looks like after hiking up 15 feet. 15 feet. <laughs> oh, brutal elevation. This is where the trail gets interesting. We're currently at 16,700 feet. We're about to climb up this mountain right here, wrap around the side, and climb all the way to the top of it, ending at 17,600 feet. So we have 1,000 feet to climb. This is a proper climb right here. We got this. Oh yeah, we got this. It's only 1,000 feet. This is like Gokyori now. Not gonna lie, this is tough. 
but we're just taking it super, super slow. Dawar Porter already made it to the top and came back to hike the rest with us. What a guy. He's carrying so much more weight than us. I can't complain. Okay. Almost there. Almost. So close. Team, hey. we have a superstar team. We're getting there. Yeah. We made it! Woo! Woo! Oh, it feels so good. Oh, yeah. oh, look at that. Another day, another set of new mountain peak views. I feel like I say it every single day, but once again, they're incredible. We can see two 8,000 meter peaks from here. Makalu, which is the pyramid-shaped mountain, and Lotse, which is located right near Everest Base Camp. Another Snickers at 17,500 feet. Thank you. Thank you so much. They so good up here. Now we get to go cross this glacier down here and cross actual ice after our disappointing glacier experience yesterday. d -Luck just gave me the best news of the day. What is it? Yes, from here we, we descend down three hours to jungle. Yes. Namaste. Beautiful. Yeah. Our first steps on snow. Woohoo! This is what I was expecting the whole trek to be. Look. I really want to go sledding down that right there. That looks so fun. Here's another look at Amadoblin, which is the most technical mountain to climb in the world. I'm singing the popular song in Nepal, Resam Piriri. Uh, we are, uh, did it uh, the Sola Pass, so we are very happy. And then I'm singing the popular song, Resam Piriri. Resam Piriri, Resam Piriri. Eknale Banduk, Dwinale Bandu, Timilai Takeko, Timilai Maile, Dakeko Haina, Maya Lai Dakeko, Resam Piri, Resam Piri, Ule Razam Kima, Dane Mavanjang, Resam Piri. Thank you. Wow, amazing. Woo! Not sure how these little ice castles formed. But with that mountain in the background, it just looks so amazing. Togi. Icicle sword fight in three, two, one. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> I think I win. <laughs> ah, I win! Whoa. I'm loose! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Short time. Oh. A couple of glorious downhill hours later and we have made it to the village of Jongla. It's noon right now, so we're six hours into our trek. We're gonna have some lunch before continuing on another two hours to the village of Lobuche. Every tea house has pretty much the same menu. You can get noodles, fried rice, potatoes soups or Nepalese dumplings. 
or Dalbot. I was in a breakfasty mood, so I got fried potatoes, eggs, and toast. Sam went with the, the Nepalese classic, the Dalbot. Bon appétit. Ramlo. Ramlo is bon appétit. Bene appétit. Ramlo. Nice. Everyone enjoy your meals. Enjoy your meals. Cheers. Cheers. We have about four miles and two hours until our next destination. So while I have a minute hiking here, I wanted to share a thought I've been having today. I've never done any sort of trekking like this before. I've done overnight backpacking trips, but even then, that was over 10 years ago. And so this isn't second nature for me. Many parts of this trip have been uncomfortable. One of my favorite quotes is there's no growth in the comfort zone. And so I've taken it upon myself this year to push myself outside of my comfort zone and see just how far I can push my body and what things I can accomplish. So this is just the first of many adventures where I'm going to try and do things that I have never done before. Coming up on Lobuche Base Camp, right here, which is the base camp for this peak, right here. <sighs> Today was long. It felt like we were walking nonstop all day. But it feels so good to finally be here. Please. Oh yeah, Dawa already brought the stuff in. Yeah. Okay. Very similar to last night. Yeah. Don't have much of a room tour here. We got two beds. Back Our stuff. Outside. Trash can. That's about it. <laughs> uh, 4,955 meter. It actually feels warm in here. Yeah, though. this is nice. It's yeah, warm. It's really nice. There is a very pleasant surprise to this room in La Buche. As you can see, I'm in a short sleeve shirt for the first time in probably five days. We just took a little body showers with some wipes, put on clean clothes. It's because the sun comes directly in this room. Normally every room we go in is frigid cold and we have to get in our sleeping bags immediately. So this is a much needed pleasant surprise that brought us back to life. <laughs> I haven't taken my coats off in seriously like five days. We deserve this after a long day. Hot chocolate and popcorn. Cheers. <laughs> According to the watch, we trekked for about nine hours, burned 2,069 calories, gained 3,000 feet of elevation, and hiked 10.84 miles. Good morning from Lobuche. Today is the day we've been waiting for. We've been trekking the last eight days to finally get to Everest Base Camp. We are currently at 16,000 feet. We're going to be trekking to Base Camp, which is at 17,600 feet. We have a three hour trek to Gorakshep, which is the village closest to Base Camp, and then another two hours up from there. This morning I'm feeling really strong mentally. I'm super excited to get to base camp and 
reach this goal that I've had for so long. Physically, I'm a little more beat up. My legs are feeling the exhaustion of the last eight days and the 12 miles yesterday. It's getting harder and harder to breathe as the air gets more thin, but we're just taking it step by step. And I seriously can't wait to get to base camp and see what it's like there. Sam's been killing it. He does a lot of trekking at home. So even though he's been sick the last couple of days, he's still just had such a good attitude and is thriving out here. And D-Lock, our guide, is a machine. He could probably trek to base camp in two days if he wanted. The route that we were on that was less traveled has now converged back up with the main EBC trail. So the trail's been a lot busier today than we've been used to. It was good while it lasted. It's still not too bad. Our first big climb of the day, the Lobuche Pass. Heading up there. We could not have picked a more perfect day to come to base camp. It is 60 degrees out here and sunny. Not a single cloud in the sky. Perfectly clear weather. It has not been this warm since day one or day two of our trek. This is a welcome surprise to hike to today. Man, this is like complete opposite of what we've been trekking to the last five days. There are people everywhere. This right here is the Kumbu Glacier. It comes directly off of Everest and goes all the way down here. You can see some lakes in the background here. We're actually about to cross this glacier right now, so this should be fun. We made really good timing getting into Gorok Shep. Only took us about two and a half hours. We are going to grab a super quick lunch, put our bags down in our room, and then head to base camp. They love the pink rooms here in the villages. Here's our home for the night. Pink all the way around. Namaste. On the road again. To base camp we go. We just made a big audible in our game plan for today. So right now Everest base camp is super busy. We see tons of groups going and we just didn't want to be there when all the people are there. So there's this viewpoint right next to where we were staying called Kalapatar. It's supposed to be the best view of Everest in all of the valley and other peaks as well. And it's clear right now, so you can still see everything. So we're gonna take a two hour hike up to Kalapatar. And then when we come back, we'll go to base camp. This elevation we will get to is 18,500 feet. So a thousand feet higher than base camp and much higher than I've ever been. And then hopefully by the time we come down, some of the crowds are gone and base camp will be less busy. Since you can't actually see Mount Everest from base camp, this is a popular trail to climb to get a really good view of Everest. This is reminding me a lot of Gokyo Ri, a really tough uphill climb at elevation. Almost there. 18,500 feet. We made it. You can instantly feel the altitude. 
get a headache. The air is super thin. It's very windy, but it is extremely beautiful up here. This is close to the coldest I've ever been in my life. It is freezing up here. One last shot of Everest before we leave. Oh, so incredible. That was insane. Dude, the wind. Have you warmed up yet? No. <laughs> it was freezing. The good news now is since we did Kalapatara first, we can now take a shortcut to base camp. We don't have to go all the way back down the mountain. And we're just getting our first look at base camp. It's really far away, hard to see, but we can see the tents and it's really cool. Pizza. Oh, nasty pizza. Oh. oh. <laughs> We are just minutes away from base camp now. Even though I'm exhausted, seeing all these tents gave me that extra life I needed to finish it out. It's pretty cool, these monks come out and bless every expedition before they start. thousand three hundred and sixty four meter all heritage Everest face can that okay. Namaste. Namaste. okay yeah thank you man for getting us here thank you <laughs> we made it we made it thank you it was amazing After nine days of trekking and 50 miles later, we have made it to Everest Base Camp. It feels so good to be here. Woo! Oh, oh wow. Gladly. Thank you. Yeah. Woo! I don't know how D-Lock does it, but he <laughs> found us hot chocolate Oreos. Hot. We're drinking hot chocolate yeah. at Everest Base Camp Everest right now. Woo. Does it get any better? Yeah. Cheers! Yeah. Oh wow, that is yummy. It is so good. Dip a little Oreo in there. Oh. Oh. D Lock, you're a legend. This is incredible. Made the whole trek worth it, seeing this right here. The further you get into it, the cooler it gets. See the Kumbu ice fields right in the background there. There's an avalanche coming down right now. People can spend two to three months here. And so it's kind of crazy seeing their laundry hanging out to dry, hot and cold showers. It's just amazing. All right, this is really cool. This is Nims Dai's camp right here. His trekking company. This guy's the most famous climber in the world. If only we could meet him for two minutes. We actually heard Nims was here right now, but we can't go up into camp, so it's still cool just to get videos of his camp. There's a Sherpa on this glacier right behind us setting up ropes, teaching people how to climb. This is amazing.
This place is absolutely incredible. I'm super glad we came later than everyone else because we have this whole place to ourselves right now. We're the last ones to leave and it just feels way more magical. Good morning from Gorak Shep, Nepal, also known as the highest inhabited village in the world at 5,170 meters. It is day 10 of our Everest base camp trek. Yesterday we made it to base camp. So we're beginning our descent down today and we have sort of an insane plan. We are going to try and make it to Namche today, which is 20 miles from here. It took us six days to get where we are now from Namche. So it is a lofty goal, but it's mostly downhill, so it's doable. We think, let's see if we can do it. I cannot stress enough how nice it was to take the route we did. That's the less traveled route. We only saw a few people the whole time. This trail is covered in people right now. The weather has cleared up quite nicely this morning. It is sunny and 62 degrees and I'm in short sleeves, which feels so good after nine days. Our flight from Lukla to Kathmandu leaves in exactly two days from right now, which means we have a day and a half of trekking to get to Lukla and make our flight back. It took us nine days to get up here from Lukla so the challenge is big, but I think we're up for it. Feeling surprisingly good today. We had a really long, tough day yesterday, but we were able to rest really well. And we're only two miles in, but feeling strong. Hopefully we can keep this up. We are five miles in now and we've just come to the Tokla Pass, which is a memorial ground for those who have lost their lives climbing Everest. There are hundreds of memorial stones here and it's just a really sobering feeling being here. seen before. We're actually going down the main EBC trail that most people come up. And so we're just coming to our first village right now of Pariche. This is actually the village of Tukla. We stopped for a quick water break. Pariche is two hours away. We're going to stop there for lunch. Eight miles in, it's about noon. We made it to the town of Pariche. Pariche in Nepali means halfway. So technically we're halfway to Namche, according to d -Lock. So we're making good time. We drive here about six hour normal walk, but our speed around five. Five hours to yeah, Namche? Five, five okay, hours. not bad. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at these little baby yaks. Yeah. This place is fancy. Port of Himalaya. We're the only ones here. Nice. Wow, I haven't seen a village this stocked with snacks and drinks in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> got ourselves a little feast here. What's on the menu today? We've got fried noodles and veggies with an egg on top oh. and actual napkins. 
not pressed, but actual magazines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this looks good. After lunch, it got very cold and very windy, but we just hit 10 miles. So we should be more than halfway there. This is saying seven hours to Namche. We're gonna do it in four. four. Yeah. Four we got this. Yeah, eat the same speed. We got the same speed. Yeah. Seen a lot of baby animals today. That's the cutest little horse. Just arrived in another village called Shomare. We have one more village to Tangbuche. I love this, every village has one of these solar heaters and they all put teapots on top of it. Best way to heat the water. We just reached 14,000 feet in elevation and officially back at the point where trees can grow again. It's crazy how even just dropping a couple thousand feet, I can already feel like I'm breathing so much better. We made a little friend that's been following us for the last mile or so, showing us the way. What's this uphill stuff, man? It's supposed to only be downhill. That was impressive. Didn't realize we were gonna be seeing so many animals today. But it's a welcome surprise. There's some musk deer. We just hit 15 miles on our trek. Just did a huge uphill climb that took a lot of energy out of me. Before that, I was totally optimistic we could make it to Namche. We're coming up on the village of Tangbuche right now. d -like said we could stay here if we're feeling tired. It sounded more tempting, but I also really want to accomplish our goal. Everything's kind of sore right now. Shoulders, neck, back, legs. But we're gonna take a quick break here. And I think we'll be good to go after that. We're coming up on the Tangboche Monastery, which looks really, really cool. I just ate the most killer apple pie at this lodge. I have new energy, I'm ready to go. We're gonna take a look at this monastery real quick and then hit the road. Five more miles, we got this. 
That was too fast. Go, 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 go. We gotta beat him. He's catching up. <laughs> no, Dawa. He's too fast. He has all the weight on. And he still beats us. Downhill. After five minutes, you cannot see the Dawa because... Oh, he's gonna sway us over. Oh. That's actually kind of sketchy. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Oh boy. Don't fall. Namaste. <laughs> Jeez. Another circle. We've officially come full circle. This is the route we took, what, six days ago? Yeah. To Gokyo. See you, Sam, doing it again. This is the start of the uphill, but also where we're splitting. Most people will go this way to base camp. We are going to Gokyo first. Yeah. And this is the route we just came up. <laughs> so we've met back up at the spot where we originally split up. That means we're close. One hour, that's easy. Easy. One hour to Namche. Everest base camp, 21 hours. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. We, we, we walk We started trekking at 7.30 this morning. It is now 7 p.m. The sun has gone down, which means that we've trekked for 11 and a half hours and 20 miles. We made it to Namche. Nice job, guys. Did it. Woo -hoo. That is a good feeling to accomplish. d -Lock said in the hundreds of times he's gone to base camp, this is only the second time He's trekked this far from Gorakshep to Namche in one day. So I'm feeling proud of us right now, guys. I'm this... very proud. Namaste. Thank you, d -Lock. Uh, We did it at Namche. No. What a beautiful sight that is. All right, let's Woo, get let's to the go. tea house. <laughs> we came back to the tea house and d -Lock had Banana chocolate cake from the bakery down the road and hot chocolate waiting for us. We love you, D-Lock. <laughs> Good morning from Namche. It is day 11 of our trek to Everest Base Camp. Today is our final trekking day. We have 11 miles to Lukla, which should take us about six hours, where we will spend the night, and then tomorrow morning, we fly back to Kathmandu and officially end our trip. Out of all the villages we've visited so far, I think Namche is my favorite. I just love how the city is built into the side of the mountain. I love all the cool shops. And it's amazing how this city functions so high up, two full trekking days away from Lukla. And they just have everything you need. Before we go, I'm gonna try and find one souvenir to take home. Found some traditional prayer flags to take home to Chloe and Lennon. And they're only two dollars. Bye, Namche. About to get speared by one of these yaks. <laughs> oh. 
having flashbacks to when we did this trail up to Namche on day two and remembering how much of a beast it was. We've been trekking uphill for the last two hours or so. We're just getting to the tail end of it. Almost to Namche. Nothing but uphill for three hours straight. Now, coming down it almost feels like an accomplishment. Like we have done something hard for the last 11 days. We finished it, and now we get to enjoy the nice, easy downhill reward to the end. This trip has helped me set all sorts of personal records. Most number of days trekked in a row. I got to the highest elevation I've ever been in my life, 18,500 feet. And yesterday we hiked 20 miles, which is the most miles I've ever hiked in a day. So this trip has been amazing. I've loved it so much. Back in Pakding, which means we're halfway to Lukla. This is the tea house we stayed in our very first night before we knew what we were getting ourselves into. Best fried rice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Wow, it looks great. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Namaste. Namaste. One last fried rice and momos. <laughs> guys on double duty carrying bags and leading the yaks okay we are stepping through the gate that starts and ends the trek which means we did it bring it in 11 yes. days. Finally finished our trek I'm saying the uh, we crossed the Pasang Lam gate we reaching that Village called the Panjing Hillary Village. Yes, thank you for Namaste. being such a great team. I so happy. I glad. Namaste. Thank you for being a great thank guy. Thank you, do you hug? Yeah. Eleven days uh, and a hundred miles. Yeah. We did it. We did it. Oh. Namaste. Namaste. Woo. Namaste. It feels so good to be back in this town. Woo! It's hard to describe the emotion, but we did it. It feels amazing. Yeah. For the last time, taking the boots off. Oh, that feels good. I'm having a lot of mixed feelings this morning. On one hand, I'm really glad to be done with the trek. We accomplished something so amazing and I'm so proud of ourselves for doing it. On the other hand, I'm gonna miss waking up and hiking to a new village every day, meeting new people, seeing new mountains. And so this is kind of a weird morning. We're on the second flight today, but since the weather was bad yesterday, no flights took off yesterday. So all the people that were supposed to leave yesterday are still in Lukla. And so there's a chance we get bumped to later. We're supposed to leave around eight o'clock, but you never know at this flight. It gets delayed quite a bit. Namaste, thank you so much. So we're not in Kathmandu. The word we got in the air was that there was a traffic jam at the Kathmandu airport. 
there are too many planes landing and no more could land today. So we have landed in a village five hours outside of Kathmandu. Today has taken an interesting turn. We have to try and find a car that will drive us the five hours to our hotel. I don't think this airport gets used very often. <laughs> We're the only ones here. <laughs> There's baby goats over here. <laughs> oh, what is our life? There was one airport worker working when we pulled up in our plane and he asked what was going on. Told him we couldn't land in Kathmandu. He's like, oh, well, you're the only flight coming in today. <laughs> airport goats. <laughs> this is definitely the most unique airport I've ever been to. I guess there's a 13 passenger van on the way to take us all to Kathmandu. Even though this was a little frustrating in the moment, it's kind of cool to see this side of Nepal. Like this is a very local experience. We're just in a random village in the mountains. The true Nepalese experience. All right, our ride's here, but there's one catch. Here's how you have to get into the van. <laughs> about to get stabbed by barbed wire. <laughs> how close am I right? <laughs> the door is stuck on the barbed wire. That's amazing. <laughs> Just stopped at a little roadside restaurant for lunch. Got some chickpeas and roti. This was less than one dollar for this meal right here. Incredible. That was so good. This might be the best one dollar meal I've ever had. <laughs> that vegetable curry is amazing. We left the airport at 11, it is now 4.05, so almost exactly five hours later. We've made it to the hotel. Oh, I'm so exhausted. Namaste. Namaste. I need to give you a, a hug real quick. So this is goodbye. Bye. I wanted to say anyone coming yeah, to Everest yeah. Base Camp, any, book with the link trek. below, any yeah. trek. Yeah. Book D-Lock, you'll have the best experience of your life. He is such a positive energy. We had so much fun with him. He made the trip way more enjoyable for us. So he's probably gonna be booked out now, pretty far in advance, so get him early. But we can't say enough good things about him. This trip was amazing, and thank you so much. Yeah, welcome, and then uh, next time again, I, uh, I want to meet with you. Yeah. I miss you every time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste.